every Japanese learner and their mother did not understand end of sentence particles at some point in their life. I am 100% sure that everybody was at that point and most of you guys are at that point probably where you don't know what this ne or this yo at the end of a sentence means and why and how I can translate that into English. And because of that, as this is one of the most important but really complicated grammars, I thought a guide like this would be the perfect video, the most esteemed video to make to help any Japanese learner, but especially beginners. This video is part of a series about how to make your Japanese sound more native. If you want to check out the other videos in this series, click on this annotation here. I will go through a lot of particles. Here are the particles that we will be looking at today. If you know all of them, bye. But if you don't or you want to learn something new about the ones you know already, then stick around because you might really get some new information about them. Often when speaking to a native speaker, they use those end of sentence particles in every sentence. And it can be really hard as a beginner and they will look at you like, do you even nuance bro? Nuance bro? The nuance, nuance? Do you even nuance? Nuance? Because those particles are nuances. They help you understand something about the person who is talking. Let's get to the first one that is yo. Yo is probably the most used end of sentence particle. You probably know it already, just skip to the next one, but if you don't, learn it, it's very important. Um, the overall translation is kind of vague, but it would usually be something like I tell you or you know. For example, if I have a sentence in English like I'm 20, you know. You didn't know I'm 20, but I'm telling you that I'm 20, then you use yo. Of course, this is an assumption by the one who is talking. You might as well know this already, but I think you don't. So basically what you do is you mark or you emphasize the sentence as a new information by using yo at the end of it. So the example I already made is Ore wa hatachi da yo. I'm 20, you know. So somebody says, oh, he's only 18, so he cannot drink in whatever country. And you say, I'm 20, you know. That would be hatachi da yo. So you're telling to the person something they didn't know or they got wrong. Kanojo wa niku taberare nai yo. She can't eat meat. You could say, Kanojo wa niku taberare nai. Of course, this has the same meaning, right? But the underlying nuance you are conveying by putting the yo there is that you are teaching or informing the person about what you're saying. Another use of yo is to emphasize a command or just emphasize a sentence. A comparable thing in English would be an exclamation mark. Of course, you cannot really use exclamation marks while talking. That's also what makes yo really special. It's like a verbal exclamation mark. So if you don't want someone to go, you just say, Ikanai de yo. It sounds harder. You could, of course, just say, Ikanai de. So that means don't go. But Ikanai de yo sounds like you don't, like you really don't want them to go. Like, please don't go. Exclamation mark in English. Zenbu no sushi tabenai deo. Don't eat all the sushi. So that again is a command. Usually, when you use it with commands, it is used with negative commands, so negated commands. Ikanai de, tabenai de, konai de. But you can also use it with normal sentences. For example, samui yo. It is cold. Exclamation mark. If somebody talks to you and says the same thing again and again, you say like, wakaru yo, wakatta yo. I got it and you emphasize that you understood it, right? You don't just say wakatta, you say wakatta yo, I understood it, I got it, so shut up, kinda, kinda thing. Now, whenever you see a yo at the end of a sentence, you know that it's either teaching you something, new information, or it can emphasize a sentence. Already, whenever you see a yo in anime, you know what it means. Let's look at the next particle, which is ne. Ne, besides yo, is the other super, super important particle that you should know 100% because those two are used most. Ne basically means that the listener shares the same opinion or has the same information as you. And you either want to get their agreement or their confirmation about something you're saying. Kono inu kawaii ne. This dog is so cute, isn't it? Koko kirei da ne. It's so beautiful here, isn't it? So the ne actually has a translation which is, isn't it? This isn't it is a question that gives the listener the idea that they have to agree or disagree, right? So you are looking for the agreement of the listener. The best answer for questions like these is usually so da ne or so desu ne. Those are set phrases that are used 
all the time. When you answer a question that has ne at the end, you just say so da ne, so desu ne. But you can also use this when there is a question without ne at the end. For example, kyo samui, then you can say so da ne. It's like an agreement, you're agreeing. So you can use ne as well when you want to agree to something. Keep in mind that in Japanese, the ne is not a question. So you don't put a question mark at the end of a sentence usually. So in English you say, isn't it? Or you say, right? But in Japanese you don't do that. You don't go up with your voice. You just say ne, it stays the same. This is quite important because you can't really use it as a question. It does imply though that you're asking for agreement. So that's kind of important. It's not a question, but you're kind of asking something. Very useful, really, really useful. The other use for ne is when you are asking for confirmation. In this instance, the ne can be translated directly to, right? You're basically looking for confirmation about something that you know, but you're not really sure about. So you have to ask the other person if it is correct. So if you think that somebody is 20 years old, but you're not 100% sure, you can say, ima hatachi da ne. You're 20 now, right? Or for example, you're going on a trip tomorrow, but you don't really know if you're if your friend is coming with you, so you say, Asta iku ne? Tomorrow we are going, right? An important thing to keep in mind is that when you have uh, nouns or na adjectives at the end of sentences and you want to use ne, you need this or da. So, inu da ne or inu desu ne. Or another example was kirei da ne or kirei desu ne. One really interesting thing about questions with ne that are trying to ask for confirmation is that the answers often use yo. Inu kawaii desu ne? Kawaii yo. Before we had so desu ne. This time you can use so desu yo. You really should know the difference between the agreement ne and the confirmation ne. Uh, I think if you translate it in your head into English, it makes more sense. But after you've heard more examples with this ne, you should get a quite a clear distinction in your head about which is which. Asta iku ne. A good answer would be iku yo. I'm going. Notice we use yo again here. Now, we said that ne can be used to ask for confirmation, but in my opinion, the better way to do this is to use a combined particle, which is yo ne. Ashita iku yo ne. The answer stays the same, it's still iku yo, but, but the, the question about asking for confirmation is, how do I say this, it's harder. When you're really unsure and you really want to ask, you can use yo ne. It's way better, it sounds way more natural, and I like it a lot more to ask for confirmation. And it's also easier to distinguish from the normal ne, which is the agreement, so asking for agreement, which is way more used than just ne to ask for confirmation. Usually native people use yo ne, but that's just my own observation. It might also happen that you find someone or see some anime that uses ne uh, for confirmation, but Usually yone is used way more often, I think. Just a side note here, because it might be confusing. Again, when you use yone, you have to use this when you have no adjectives or nouns before it. So, inu da yone. This is a dog, right? Like, I'm not sure, it might be a cat, but it's a dog, right? Because you should know. The third and last function of ne, which is not as important, but is still used, is softening a command by using it. So before with yo, we had the hardening a comment, right? We had the exclamation mark. So you would use yo to make an, a, a, a command harsher. So ikanai de yo. This time you can put ne <laughs> at the end to make it softer. Ikanai de ne. Don't go, okay? In English, using the okay at the end makes this command a lot softer. The same happens in Japanese with the ne. Kono pan tabete ne. Eat this bread, okay? You could also say, Kono pan tabete kudasai ne. It's a polite command softened by the particle ne, which is very often used when you are in a polite setting. Because softening things is the way to go in Japan. You want to be as indirect and as soft as possible when expressing something in a polite setting. And the ne is very, very commonly used to achieve this effect of softness when using commands or generally like requesting something from someone or just having thoughts you want to express, ne is the way to go. Yo is very casual when it comes to that or very harsh when you want to be harsh, also in polite settings. You can be harsh sometimes, but it's often avoided in Japan, of, of course, obviously, it's Japan. <laughs> what did you expect? They're the most polite country in the world. Okay, now we have the two big ones out of the way, the ne and the yo, used 80% of the time. Now we get to the nuanced ones that really, really 
confuse many people because ne and yo come up in a lot of example sentences in books, they come up in anime all the time, so we will get the, the idea of how to use them quite quickly. But the next three or four we look at now are used less often and are very specific. The next particle is no. Usually no is used like ka at the end of sentences to ask questions, but in a casual way. As you know, ka is used after the must form or the this, which is the formal form or just formal way of asking questions. So, uh, doko ikimasu ka? Ashita kimasu ka? Kore inu desu ka? All those questions with ka, right? You learn about this, everybody learns about this in their second chapter of Japanese, so that's the first thing one learns. I don't know why, but Japanese textbooks usually don't start with the casual form. No is used when you want to ask questions the exact same as ka, but you don't need the des. It's as simple as that. For example, the sentences I said before are similar sentences. Itsu iku no? When do you go? It's the same as itsu ikimasu ka? But casual. A good answer to this question would be ashita iku no? I go tomorrow. When having a question with no, many people use no to answer, and the way this works is the same as with yo. The no usually just makes things more colloquial. So you can exchange this with yo, you could also say asta iku yo, same meaning, just different particle. Why would no be important? Two things. One thing, it makes things colloquial, which is very important because you don't want to speak with your friends the same as with your boss in Japan. And two, it fills the void that ne cannot fulfill. So with ne, you ask for confirmation, as we said, but you do the same thing here, right? You ask a question, but it is really when you don't know anything. With ne, you ask for confirmation about something you think, but you're not sure about. With no and ka, of course, in the polite way, <laughs> you ask about something that you don't know anything about. So usually the particles that come up in this context with these particles, so ka and no, are doko, dare, itsu, and so on. All of these, I don't know anything about this particular thing, but I'm asking you about it. And another really important thing is that no cannot be used after da. Or it could be used, but it's very, very weird. Da is just a no-no with no. The thing you do is you say nano. Who knows why, but it's the way it is. You can say desu no, but not dano. Dano doesn't work. It's nano. The idea of using nano is the same as with any of these particles when you have to use da in between the particle and a noun or a adjective. So for example, doko nano, so where or where was it? And as a contrast, you can use des or data, the past form, uh, with no, so there is no na. You just say datta no. So doko datta no? Where was it? And then you can say, for example, soto na no, or soto datta no. So as you can see, the nano can kind of replace the des forms, but it doesn't have to, unless it's a da. When it's a da, you have to replace the da with na. Dano doesn't work. One thing to note though is if you want to use no after des, which is a polite form, you'd rather use ka because the no after des sounds weird as it is a weird combination of like casual and polite forms, which usually doesn't work very well. One important like sentence that I want to tell you about that is widely used by everybody is doshita no. Even people that usually don't incorporate no in their speaking use this the way it is. It's a fixed phrase, it just means what's up or what is the matter. Doshita no? Of course you can just say doshita, but it's important to know that you can also say doshita no because if you hear this somewhere, you're just gonna be confused about why is there a no there. <laughs> also know that doshite and doshita are not the same thing. Many people say doshita as doshite and the other way around because people kind of confuse those two, but doshita is what's the matter and doshite is why. No is often used at the end of sentences, not only in answers. Before we had the answer thing, where you use no at, uh, at the end of an answer, the same way as you would use yo, but in a casual way. But it can also be used at the end of any sentence to make a sentence softer. This is very often used by women or children or just people that want to sound softer. So even if somebody didn't ask you a question, you could say, ima kara soto iku no. I'm going outside. So same thing as with yo, soto iku yo, same meaning. You're informing somebody about what you're gonna do, but it's soft. 
Na is another particle that many people struggle with, understanding what the Na is. I think this would be the particle that most people ask me about in the comments when asking about these end of sentence particles because it's not really something that you learn by using textbooks. Probably there are some beginner textbooks that actually teach you this particle, but most of them didn't for me anyways. What this na can do is the same as ne, it can express something you know or you feel without asking from the listener for anything. So you're not asking for any confirmation or any agreement. You just say what you feel or you think. That is the big difference to the ne. So when you want to say, wow, this, this thing is so cute, you say kawaii na, or for example, it's so hot, atsui na, you just say what you think, what you feel, without any attachments to the listener. So you can say this without getting an answer, and it's totally normal. So many people actually use this to talk to themselves. So when they enter a room and it's hot, they say atsui na, casually. When you want to roughen a ne, as a man, for example, because usually women shouldn't do this. You can, but you shouldn't, or most people just don't, is by just replacing the ne with a na. So, asta iku yo ne, so you're asking for confirmation from the listener. You can transform the sentence into asta iku yo na, so it's the same meaning, but it's rougher. One could also just say it's manlier. So by making a sentence rougher, you're setting the expectations that something is true higher. So the sentence from before, asta iku yo ne, is not as high in, ter in terms of expectation that this is true as asta iku yo na. So you are expecting that this person is going tomorrow. You sound like a father that has this expectation of his son and he's asking him, you're going tomorrow, right? And you kind of imply that if he doesn't go tomorrow, then that's bad. Again, a second sentence would be kare mo kuru yo ne. He's also coming, right? So it would be kare mo kuru yo na. He's also coming, right? And it's it's more expecting you. The nuance of expectation becomes harsher. The next particles, <laughs> note it's two, uh, which are zo and ze, are again only used by men. Zo is used the same as yo, ashita iku zo. Again, just remember, this is used by men. If you are a woman and you want to use this, it will sound manly. This zo and the ze are very often used in anime by male characters. So ikoze, ikuzo, those set phrases that are used, so let's go, or we're going now, those are like the exclamation mark yo. So you can emphasize a sentence like with yo, with this zo, but it cannot be a command. So for example, ikanai de zo, itte zo, doesn't work. Just doesn't. So no commands, but normal sentences like uh, taberu zo, that works. So we're going to eat now, or we're, we're eating now. Tabeo ze, let's eat. Ze is often used with let's do something, with this kind of sentence. And zo is often used when you want to put an exclamation mark like with yo uh, at the end of a sentence, but sound rougher. Again, manlier in a way. The final particle on this list is wa. And this time it's for you ladies, because this is almost exclusively used by women, especially mature women. So if you want to use this, you will sound way older than you are because it makes you mature. It makes you like sound like a mother. <laughs> It also makes sentences super soft. That's also why feminine people tend to use this a lot more. The two ways to use wa is after any this form, so this, da, data, dishta, or as wayo. Wayo sounds weird when I'm saying it like that, but it translates to the particle yo, but feminine. So if you have a noun, you would say inu da wa, or inu wa yo. And as you notice that this disappears because wayo just doesn't use this before it. Kirei da wa, kirei wa yo. I don't know why. It's just the way it is and you have to understand it when somebody uses it. It can also be used after a verb or an e adjective just as wa. So it only has to be after this or any des form when it is an adjective or a noun as always. So if somebody asks you, are you going tomorrow? Asta ikimasu ka? You have a few possibilities here to use this wa. You can either say iku wa or ikimasu wa, so I'm going, or you can say ikimasu wa yo, then you have this teaching or 
informing aspects of your answer, which is the same as with yo. So iku or iku yo, this kind of difference, same thing, just that you have a wa now in between the yo and the sentence. Uh, or you can say iku dawa, and dawa is very weird after a verb. So I would not use this. I've heard it used. It's grammatically wrong though. Just so you know that it exists. I don't know why, but iku desu wa. Sounds very weird. Just know when somebody puts a wa at the end, it's feminine. It defaults to feminine. The sentence is feminine now. <laughs> you will really quickly understand this because they usually also have this weird intonation in anime, not in real life, and especially not in real life, but in anime they have this feminine voice when they use wa at the end of sentences. I hope I can find a clip to show you this, but I'm sure you know what I mean. It's like this ara ara kind of energy, which, uh, mature women usually use to sound feminine. I hope this video kind of helps you guys because I know I would have needed the help when I started out learning Japanese. This should probably help most of you understand anime a little bit better because anime just has an abundance of these end of sentence particles. They love it. If you want to learn more about Japanese or just learn more about Japan in general, you are one click away from fulfilling your dreams by clicking this button down there, the red one, and also hit the like for the algorithm. I thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Matane.